Okay, what do we have here? We have two profiles of Boris Karloff as the monster from Frankenstein. Now, this one is about 10 to 15% larger than that one. Now, you might be asking, why do I have these here? Well, this is the next mask I will be sculpting, and I will be trying to do a likeness sculpt of Karloff as the monster. And the reason I have these is because this is a very important first step. Um, what I have here is a cutout in black foam core of each of these printouts. So this is a very accurate profile of Karloff as the monster, two different sizes. Um, I'm gonna pick which size I'm gonna use because as we all know, latex shrinks. So whatever size my sculpture ends up being, I have to add 10% to it from the beginning so it shrinks down to the size I want. I'm likely going to go with this. Here's the size of my hand next to it. So it is bigger than a human head, but it's not that much bigger. But imagine after the mask is made, it's going to be 10% smaller than that. So when I'm putting clay on my armature, I'm going to be using this, holding it up onto the clay so I'm getting the correct proportions from the very beginning. So this is accurate to that. So that is going to be a big first step. That is why I make this. Ah, yes. Clay. And an armature with nothing on it. That is going to change. All right, so here we are. I put the styrofoam cutout on my armature and just started spending the last 20, 30 minutes filling it in with clay to get the rough silhouette. As you can see, it's very narrow, you know, but at least now I have a, the correct proportions for things. I'm gonna take the styrofoam off now. It's hard to do this with one hand. Okay. And now I'm gonna to start to rough it out and make it look like a head. All right, now I'm upstairs in front of my computer and what I'm doing is I found the profile uh, reference here that I, that I used to cut that uh, profile that I'm using um, on my roughing out. And I'm finding, I found a, you know, there's lots of Karloff pictures of the monster, but I found a front view one that as you can see, I made the, I, I dropped the pictures into Adobe Illustrator and I'm using these guides, li making sure that I'm lining up the faces, so I have a profile and a front view, and I want them pretty much seeing, trying to find the right front view shot that lines up, you know, because when you take a picture of, sometimes if you shoot it from below or above, it's, it's, it can change, if we all know, it changes the view of the face, and I want a front view that matches up to the same angle as the side view. So I'm lining these up, and these line up pretty damn good. So now for my front view, of the sculpture that I'm, you know, working on, I'm going to be printing out this because it corresponds with this. So these pictures were probably taken from very similar angles. This is going to be very helpful because if I don't use front re front view reference, like for example, here's another one. This picture here does not is taken a, a slightly from a slightly underneath him, and it does not line up. It's completely wrong. And I mean, even though it's it's not it, it, it's just not right. So this is the correct view. So this is what I'll be using for the front view, at least in this stage of the sculpture. You know, when I'm much more into the sculpture, I'll be using a dozen pictures, if not more than that. But for right now, to get the right proportions and the right shapes that correspond with each other, this is what I'm gonna be using for the front and the side view. Okay, so here's another thing. So there's the front view. And as you can see, I drew in Adobe Illustrator, I drew black lines around the main um, shapes of the shape of the head, the ears, where the nose, where the mouth is, where the eyelids, everything. Your basic shapes for the silhouette of the front. And what I'm gonna do is, this is the, uh, let me put that back. Now, 
I, before I did that, I took my photo, I took a front view photo of my sculpture as it is right now, which is just really just blocked out, not even, it's just an hour's worth of work. And I laid it, it's in, right now it's in transparent, the opacity is zero, but I laid it over the photo of Karloff. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna bring the opacity back up to 100%, see? And what doing that is, here's what I'm gonna do. Let me do something here. I'm gonna lock that. I'm gonna take the Karloff photo and I'm gonna slide it over there. Okay. Now I'm gonna take a photo of my sculpture and I'm gonna bring the opacity down to like 50%. Now, now I'm gonna print that out. Now you see all this negative space on my sculpture. See, now I know where I need to put clay to get, to rough my sculpture out to where it's closer to this shape. So this is what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna print this out. All right, so I took the print out and I added clay where it needed to be. Now, of course, this is still being blocked out, but you know, now this is how it's come along. This is how I'm gonna get the correct proportions. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a picture of this and do this again and make another drawing showing the lines showing where I need to contour this because the eyes, nose, and mouth aren't even on this. Right now I'm just doing for the overall proportions and silhouettes of the front and the side. I'm still blocking this out. Still very, very, very rough, but this is how sculptures start. All right, we're further along here. Still roughing it out, still figuring out where things go, but it's further along. Okay, so here's where we are now. This is um, the latest iteration of the sculpture. And what I did is I laid over my Adobe Illustrator black lines, which are basically traced over photographs of Karloff from the side as the monster. So you can see my sculpture, even though it's very rough, proportionately, everything is in the right space. The mouth is in the right spot, the nose, the eyes, the chin, the shape of the head. I have to carve a little bit. The ears have to be lowered. I have the ears too high. And the ears, even the silhouette is pretty good, um, where everything's lined up correctly, but the ears are have to be not only lowered, on the front view, but they have to be moved back. So I have to fix that later. Um, yeah, look at that. So it's off, but, and the eyes actually may have to be, or the eyelid, the hanging, that heavy lid might have to be slid back, but, but it is heading in the right direction since this is only the second day. Okay, things are starting to move along here. The likeness is starting to come in. You know, still figuring this out, so it's still very rough. The ears are just like plopped on. Concentrating on the face. Um, you know, working on the mouth still. So, progress, moving along. Lots of reference. Even using reference of sculptures, because sometimes you see something in a sculpture that's accurate that you wouldn't maybe see in a photo. I don't know, I'm using everything. I'm just looking at this thing from every angle. That's the way I think I gotta do it. Here's a little something I wanted to show. Let me show where I am right now. So I'm on this, and I just noticed in this picture, you see how his brow here goes inward. It's that little bit of a like that. And mine on this side, for example, I just cut in, I just marked in the clay this. From that angle, I just did this side, but this side is, this, this bit right here needs to be removed so it, it goes, it has that dip. Because you have to, see how right here it kind of dips inward on the side of the skull. Just on just on a, it's this area here, because this is where Jack Pierce built up the appliance. So 
I need to have this dip and I don't have as much as a dip here, so I need to cut that out. These are the things you need to do when you're sculpting, especially a likeness. I have so many pictures here of Boris Carla from 1931 Dracula. All different angles, you know, front views, side views, looking up, looking from this angle. I mean, everything you could think of because you have to look at every angle when you're sculpting to get the likeness. Well, here it is, Friday. Day five of this sculpture. Things are coming along. I worked on the ears. I mean, they're still, you know, they're more rough. They're still rough, but they're more defined than they were yesterday. Um, instead of working on the head shape, it needed to be a little rounder. So I removed a lot of clay. Worked on the mouth a little bit, the jawline. Uh, the eyes, you know, lots of little things. Well, here we are. Um, I haven't sculpted in a couple of days. I was finishing a mask, uh, herring and painting. So got back to sculpting this morning. Just doing, you know, more of the same. Working on the eyes and the eye bags and the, oh, that's very blurry. Um, working on the mouth a little bit, the eyelids, the eye bags, the shape. You know, I'm taking my sweet time with this thing. I want this thing to be really accurate. So, still doing lots of the small things. Um, but I mean, it's coming along. Literally, today is the one week mark. I started this sculpture one week ago today. So, it's, in a week it's coming along pretty well. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it so far. The likeness is definitely there. It looks like Karloff. All right, I just went over the sculpture with a sponge and brushes with water. So I brought down a lot of the rake marks. So it's very smooth now. And uh, I guess the next step on the sculpture is add skin texture, add all the details. And that's it. Okay, so this sculpture is pretty much ready for texture and detail. It's still very smooth. Still some brush marks on there, but it's, except for texture and detail, it is sculpted. So those are the tools I'm gonna to be using for texture. I have my paint brushes and water, and I'm gonna get my texture pads out. And over the next few days, when I have time, I'll be down here and doing all that work and it's a lot it's a lot to do so it's very smooth now that all that's going to change i'm going to get some really good skin textures going here and we're going to make ourselves a frankenstein monster mask here okay here we are again so what i did today this morning is number one i roughed out the bolts on the sides of the neck I added the clamp. Again, this is very rough because um, he's got that one bolt on that side. He doesn't have one on this side. You know the reference. So he's got the one bolt, uh, one clamp, and the bolts. Then I sprayed my entire sculpture with water and I used my stipple sponge here. And you see, by doing with a stipple sponge, you can add a very slight texture just to start off, you know, because it just, I did the entire sculpt with the stipple sponge texture, just to get some kind of a texture started on this. I'm not really a bit worried about the texture where there's going to be hair. I'm just going to put a basic texture down, but I'm going to be focusing now from now on for the rest of the next few days on texturing the areas of the face and ears and neck where you're going to see the skin. So now I am using a texture stamp here that I made on an orange or something and I'm going over the entire face lightly, you know, getting a very nice let's see if I can get this to be sharp. There you go. Starting to go over it. There's a lot to guide. Literally, yesterday, 
in the morning used a uh, stipple sponge, wet stipple sponge. Now I'm using this texture pad, and I have a bunch of texture pads here. And I'm going over every area of the skin to give it texture. Once I do the texture pads, then I'll go in with some of these small tip tools, like something like this, and I'll get in all these small areas that a texture stamp really can't get in. There's tons of detail I want to put on this. So it's going to take a few days here and there working. Let me get the sharpness back. So that is where we are now. So I decided to remove the bolts because looking at the photos, the bolt has, you know, it's a much more, it's not just a cylinder. It has those little piece on top that, that has this, this, this negative space in there. It's, 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 I, I decided to make a, to sculpt, I'm going to sculpt one bolt out of Chavant clay, oil-based clay, and make a silicone mold and cast it in plastic. I'll just make two copies of that casting and glue them on eventually. So I'm going to sculpt that probably Sunday, because today's Saturday morning. So yeah, it'll just look better. It's more accurate. I, I mean, I don't want to, after putting all this, you know, detail and work into the sculpture over the past week and a half, almost two weeks, to just take the easy way out on uh, on the bolts and just do it in wet clay and a, a, a simple version of it. It needs to be, I'm trying to be accurate here, so. All right, what we have here is a bolt that I sculpted in Chabant. And I'm going to make a silicone mold right now of it and then cast it in plastic and then stick that in the sculpture and make an indentation where the plastic bolts will be embedded in the latex mask. Um, it's not perfect, but I think this will do the trick. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm heating up the hot glue gun because I'm going to use, I'm going to hot glue this cup, the edges to this, because I'm going to put the bolt sculpture in there and use that as my little space to fill the silicone. So I have to hot glue this edge down because silicone will seep through that. All right, so what we have here is, I have the bolt I sculpted in Chavant, and I have a, um, plastic lid and a plastic paper cup that I, not a plastic paper cup, a plastic cup that I cut the bottom off. And I'm using that as my little, um, I guess the cavity to put the sculpture in so I can make the silicone mold. So I'm going to mix up the silicone. I just hot glued this to keep uh, the cup and the lid together so nothing seeps out. All right, I got my silicone part A and part B in my cup. It's all mixed up. I got 130 milliliters. Should be more than enough, so I'm going to mix it now. Mixing it up. I should be using two hands for this, but I want to put it in the video. I'm going to make sure to scrape the sides and the bottom of the cup and then pour it in. All right, silicone just mixed up, so I'm going to pour it in. And here we go. I made more than enough. And this stuff isn't cheap, so, but whatever. Let's pour it in slowly. See, now, because of that hot glue on the outside of the, uh, where I attach the cup to the lid, that way it won't leak through. Because this stuff is so watery, it would seep through. You got to make sure, and I hope I did it good enough so that it uh, doesn't seep through. All right. Actually, I don't think I made too much. I think I made just enough. Yeah, look at that. I made a little too much, but that's all right. All right, right to the top. Okay, here we go. Good. So that's silicone mold. Flexible silicone. And I'll just pop the clay out. It'll just pop, you know, pull right out. Okay. There's a little bit of clay still in there, so I'm just going to use a sculpting tool and pop it out. Okay, I need to shave. Now, here's what we got for making the, the uh, bolts. I'm using 
Brick in the Yard Easy Flow 60 liquid plastic. And um, I'm using parts A and part B. I already have them in the cups and I got my popsicle stick to mix and the mold. So I'm going to put this down and I'm going to mix and pour. And then we'll make, and I'm making a little more than I, again, I, I, I'd rather make a little too much than not enough. Okay. I buy a lot of popsicle sticks and plastic cups for mixing things. And I'm gonna mix this really well for a minute. You had, this, this takes like, it says pretty quick, but it's not a lot, so I, under 15 seconds or so and I should be good. I'm going to pour it into the mold. It's, you can feel it in my hand. You can feel it getting warm already. It's already starting to activate. Okay, I think that's good. So right here. Of course, I'm making a mess. So now, I'm going to pour it in my mold. Yes, yeah, see, I made way more than I needed. But that's fine. All right, folks, here they are. Bolts. All right, well, I took the bolts and I just kind of put them in the right spots. So there, let me turn this. So they're symmetrical. Now, I'm gonna remove them and dig deeper into those indentations so I can make them deeper because I want I want them to go about this much this deep from here to here into the latex mask these I cast these solid these are solid they're not heavy or anything but the ones I actually use for the mask will be hollow these are just placeholders. Okay, now back to sculpting. All right, this is pretty much done. I think this came out pretty good. The bolts are plastic and I made them separately. I'll remove them before I make the mold tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna come in close and show some the texture. Show the mouth. All right. It is Wednesday morning. It is a little before five o'clock a.m. And we're going to make a mold. We're all set up. Just wanted to show that uh, I removed the bolts. So we have spaces there for those plastic bolts to eventually, when this is a mask, they will be inserted in there. All right, I'm gonna get busy. Time to make ourselves a mold. All right, so here's where we are now. I just cut uh, all my strips for my clay wall. I have some extra here if I need more. I even made my keys and I sprayed all my Krylon acrylic crystal clear and my dulling spray on my sculpture. All the coats are on there. I also took a Sharpie and carefully just did a black line. And this black line is where I'm gonna put the clay wall and it's helpful to have that black line so I have a even division of the sculpture anyway I'm gonna start putting the clay wall up now all right my clay wall is up got my keys put in there um, I put saran wrap on the front just to protect it just in case when I'm putting ultra cal back here any a little drip splashes this way it's not going to get on my sculpt one thing at a time first we're doing the back um 
clay went out, the clay wall went up pretty good. Didn't take too long. Got a nice line in there. And uh, now I'm gonna do the splash coat. I, I wanted to point out to everybody, it's very important that you have your coffee nearby when you're making a mold, especially because it's 10 minutes to 6 a.m. right now. So I like to start early. As you can see, the sun isn't up yet, but that's okay. Because I like to start early so I can get done early. All right, back to work. Look at that, first splash coat, up. So far, so good. And now, second splash coat. Okay, second splash coat is on there. And we are ready to get some burlap going on this bad boy. All right, there we go. Back of the mold is done. Beauty coat is put on. Not as beautiful as other people's molds, but, you know, whatever. And, uh... I'm gonna take a little break. And uh, I'm gonna go have more coffee and come down in 20 minutes and start the front. With coffee in hand, I am now going to turn this mold on its back because the back's done. Mmm, delicious. All right, so. I'm going to take this and tilt it. Okay. On its back. Now, I'm going to use these weights to keep this like that. Because, let's move this here. Where can I put this? All right, let me turn it. I'm going to take, I'm going to, and let's see. Yeah. I'm going to unscrew this from the uh, base so I don't have the, you know, this big wooden piece as I'm doing the front of my mold. So I'm going to put the camera down and do that. All right. See those dumbbells really come in handy for keeping your mold from, you know, turning. All right. I'm going to take the um, saran wrap off. Carefully, very good. And I'm gonna take all this, the clay wall away and then we'll get back to work. And there he is. I think I got a pretty damn nice looking seam going here. Pretty good. Um, like always, when I tilt a sculpture on its back, then I can see all the little areas that I missed when sculpting that I'm going to touch up in the, inside the nostril and all that. So I'm going to take about five minutes and, and tweak this just a little bit under the neck. Like there's some marks here. It's hard to see when you're, un, you know, even when you sit below the sculpture, it's hard to see it until it's on its back. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so here's where we are. About to do the splash coat on the front of the sculpt. Now what I've done here, this is... Something I don't always do, but I really wanted to do it today because I wanted to, especially because I'm making a video, but because I hate sometimes when I'm making the front of a mold and the UltraCal goes over onto the backside and, and I want a nice clean line where these uh, two pieces are going to be separated. So I basically, you know, once I put my Vaseline on my exposed edge and put my uh, pry points, one, two, and three, um, I took some clay that I had cut earlier from my clay wall and I put them in a little plastic container to keep them moist. And I built this little wall here, which is not very high. It's maybe half an inch height from the uh, uh, edge of the, uh, of the back of the mold. But this way, when I put my splash coat and everything in there, it's not gonna run over the edge of the mold and onto the back side. So it'll be a nice clean edge and it'll make it easier when I have to pry the front off the back that I'll see where that uh, front and back end, there'll be a nice line. Also, I put a Sharpie marker here. I put a little line 
directly underneath where the pry point is, just in case, on all three of them. Little mark there. Um, so I can, you know, it's easier to spot where the pry point is if a little ultra cut gets over the edge. All right, beauty coat, front of the mold. This mold is done. It's still wet, setting. So I'm gonna take a little breaky poo, go upstairs. I finish my second thermos of coffee. Well, I just removed the front half and uh, came up really easily. And I didn't have much clay sticking at all to the inside. Did little bits here and there. Um, so now I'm gonna dig uh, the back half out and then take this mold outside and give it a nice hosing off. Um, so far, so good. It's a little after 10 o'clock in the morning. I started this mold five hours ago. And now it's time for the hose. Um, the clay popped out pretty good. Didn't take too much work to get the clay out. There's some resi resi uh, resi bleh, residual clay here and there and in the ears. But I'm just gonna use the hose to clean this uh, mold out. And uh, mold came out pretty good. I don't even see any air bubbles at all. Not even little ones. I think, I mean, there's tiny microscopic ones and stuff like that, but yeah. So I am, I'm very excited about this mold. All right, I'm gonna hose this out now. And there we have it, folks. Finished mold. I think this is one of the best molds I've ever made. Um, I have very, a couple of little microscopic air bubbles in there. Nothing big. Got a nice, really nice separation between the two. Nice, this is one of the nicest looking molds. I'm really happy with it. Um, so I'm gonna let this, you know, I took it outside and hosed it out. I'm gonna let it sit for a few hours. Good morning, it's the next day. It is Thursday. It is approximately 20 minutes to 6 a.m. My first thermos of coffee. Today, we are ready to pour latex in our mold. Exciting. So I have the back half and the front half waiting, airbrush for blowing into the mold to make sure air is getting into the ears and all the small little areas. I don't want to risk having an air bubble. My latex is on the floor over here. I've got a chip brush, a spray bottle, paper towels. I have a piece of Gorilla Tape, big long piece here, because I don't use straps. I hate those, those nylon straps with those metal clasps, I hate them. So I haven't used them in a couple of years. I use Gorilla Tape. Gorilla Tape, big black tape, comes in different colors. It's really strong. I mean, you can get it at any hardware store or Amazon, but it's great, I love this. I never use straps. And I have my latex on the floor over here. I have this black bucket of latex. And the black bucket latex is thin down latex. It's very milky. It's not thick. I use the thinner stuff for the painted in layer. Then I use the regular latex after that and I pour it in. Okay, so I think we're ready here um, to go to time lapse. All right, enough time lapse. Now I'm gonna use the airbrush and blow in all the ears and crevices. And that's it for the ears. Now I'm gonna get into the face.
mouth, the nose, the eye areas. Put the two pieces together. So you need the, the uh, face is going to go into the back half. So I'm going to put these mold here, and I'm going to use the dumbbells again for keeping this in place. And I'm going to. I did not put sharpie marks on the to give it as a guide. So I'll have to do that later. But this should line perfectly up. Now, like I mentioned before about the Gorilla Tape, uh, I'm going to move this Gorilla Tape a little closer. I'm going to move the weights. I'm going to put the mold on the Gorilla Tape. I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to pull this in tighter, and I'm going to strap it around. And there we go. And I'm going to do a piece at the top. I'm going to do three pieces. I'll do the bottom of the mask mold next. Table like that. Put the mold underneath. Make sure it's on tight. This stuff is, sticks to itself really good. I mean, it's not coming off. You have to. When I remove this stuff in, in a day or so, I have to cut it off to take it off. You can't just peel it off. All right. And I'll put a piece around the top. Or Sometimes I do. Put it right on the seam. And just press it in. paint the latex on the on the inner seam where they meet. Usually you can, I'll take like a chip brush and I'll just paint latex inside there. But what I'm going to do instead is pour latex in this and then pour it right out into the back of the bucket. First I'm going to have a sip of coffee. Mm. And I use the weights to prop the mold up, and it's not going anywhere. Um, where is the lid to the lid? I'll just use the same thinner latex that I was using earlier. I'm going to pour it like halfway in. Take the weights away carefully. And I'm just gonna turn the mold. Careful not to spill it.
I don't, I don't like to dwell my masks. I rarely do. I just want to be, I'd rather do it one layer at a time like this and pour a layer in, pour it out, and then drain it. Because to me, it's like I have more control over the thickness that way. All right, so now I did that. I'm going to put this mold in the bucket, like literally put it in the bucket and leave it, let it drain for like 45 minutes. So I can't move the camera to show you that, so I'm just going to I'll do it in a minute. And put this there. in my hand. So I will wipe it off. Oh. Okay. Let's move this. So. There's the mold. It's got a painted layer and I poured some in and slushed it around. That's a pretty good start. And I'm going to let this drain for like 45 minutes um, and then let it sit out and we'll take it from there. All right, I took the uh, mold out of the bucket. It's done draining and I'm, again, these dumbbells, they're old. I never really worked out with them. You know, I have better ones, but these are great. I use these all the time when I'm mold, making molds or casting, so who knew? Anyway, there's the inside. You can kind of see what's going on in there. Um, I have three layers of latex in there. I didn't show, the, after I put it in the bucket the last time, I actually poured some more in it a little while later. And I think this is more than thick enough. Um, all slush pours, it's not, no, no dwelling. Um, there you can see up in the nose. Hopefully, you know, I have no air bubbles. I mean, there's some air, air bubbles you can see there, but that's, you know, inside the mask. Anyway, so this, I'm going to let this sit. It's wet. I'm just going to let it sit here. It's now like 8.30 in the morning. So I'm going to let it sit for, you know, three or four hours. And then I'll put it on the floor and put the box fan blowing into there. Um, not on high or anything, on low. I don't want to, I don't want to start, I don't want the, the inner edge, the, this edge, the exposed edge of the latex to start to set when and then make a thick skin and then have inside it be wet so for today i'm just going to blow the air gently in um since i started early i mean i'll have air blowing in this mold i'll probably put the fan like let's say here on the floor like a couple of feet away just so having a gentle stream of air blowing in there so it'll 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 start to get air and and dry and cure slowly but by tonight let's say 10 o'clock tonight That'll be blowing in there for like, you know, nine hours or something, or 10 hours. So before I go to bed tonight, I'll put the box fan right up into the, right in, in the opening on, on full blast. And all the latex that's going to be in that mold is in that mold. So now I have the box fan over here from a couple of feet away. I'm going to turn it on low. And I'm just going to let it blow into the mold. I don't want it to blow. It's on low and it's far away. So just, there's some air going in there, but it's not too forceful. And I'm gonna let it sit like that for the day. Good morning. Ah, delicious. Okay, I think this thing's ready. It's the next morning. It's been, it was in front of the box ran overnight on a high. Start, I put it on high like around 7 o'clock last night, and it's now like 9 o'clock in the morning. So it's been like 14 hours blowing in there, and it's starting to pull away already, you know, from the side. So I just powdered it before I started recording. So we're going to take this out, and hopefully it's done. And uh, we'll see. So like I showed, said before, the Gorilla Tape, what you do is just cut it off. Uh, you know, I really recommend getting rid of those straps. If you like straps, stick with straps. But, you know, I hate those things. So, Gorilla Tape, you cut it off. It work great. Just throw it out when you're done. I 
just, you know, I just hope I'm not pulling this away too early and the ears aren't aren't completely done. But I, I don't know. It feels right. It feels like it's pulling away. And look, their color's right, so. Okay, so I got this there. All right, and now I will just, this is the back of the head, so I'll just pull that back. The ears, actually, mm, yeah, because I molded the ears on the back. So if I, I'm gonna have to, yeah, so maybe I'll work, do the front first. Yeah, I'll do that. The front will come out. The front will, will pop out much faster than the ears I'm gonna have to pull off. So hopefully it's good. All right, yeah, that's coming right out. The front of the mold will come right off. Hopefully there's no air bubbles and problems. There's a little bit of residue clay, which of course always happens on the first pull. Can we see this? Let me move this over here more. Let me go above. There we go. Light too. Okay. That looks pretty good. All right, now the ears. Hopefully they're good. Oh man, I really need to shave. I'm gonna shave tonight. All right. Gently, because I, just in case, I wanna make sure these ears are good. It looks so, yeah, it's good. Yeah, good, excellent. And now, oh, I'm not showing as I'm doing this. Beautiful. All right. So there's the first pull. Now I'll turn this back. There's the first pull. I'm gonna inspect. You know, I'm gonna have to trim the seam, but you know, we always do. Oh, the ears are nice and thick. Good, good, good. See, I got my indentation for the for the bolts. All right, there's a few minor little, I can fix those, little places, but that's nothing. All right, great. I have bags right over here. See, I'm prepared. I have all my stuff. In. I think I'm going to cast another one later today. I'm going to start. I want to make more copies of this. Whoa, bags are flying everywhere. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some bags out here. Also, I'm going to get some polyfill. And I need... Where is that? This thing. Alright, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some bags. And I'm going to stuff them in. So this is not very thick. This is just the right thickness. Because like I said, when I hair this mask, the, the Mod Podge that I use as glue, is gonna really stiffen up the area of the head that has hair. So that's gonna keep it really sturdy. And plus the latex now, the, the latex is out of the mold. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it sit out all day and the air is gonna, it's gonna thicken up the, um, the latex. Part of the mold. This is what I use sometimes to paint masks on. Piece of wood with a pipe in it. All right. Good. And this, you know, all of a sudden, you know, I can trim these big pieces up now. I'll go in later today with my little scissors and like these, you know, big hanging things. Let me just make sure this is sitting up straight. He's good. All right, let's uh, turn the light here a little bit. All right, there he is. There is the first pull straight out of the mold. I'm gonna have to clean all that residue, residue clay. See, there's a couple of small little air holes right there in the upper lip. But 
that's nothing. I mean, I can fix that easily. You'll never know. I mean, you know because I'm showing you, but you'll never know when it's done, when it's all fixed. So, I'm very happy. Uh, I'm really excited to paint and hair this guy uh, tomorrow on Saturday. Okay, so the mask has a little bit of resi residual clay on it, so I'm gonna take it over here to the sink. And I'm just gonna scrub it off with a scrubber and some water. He's already getting a little sturdier because he's been out of the mold now for five, six hours. Okay, let's come over here. Let's come back here. Put this down. Whoa. All right, I'm going to put him back in front of the fan, dry it off. No, still haven't shaved. So, it's five o'clock. So now it's time to do the seams. I have these little scissors. And all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lower this, bring it in a little closer. All I'm really concerned about is from here, the ear down. This is gonna have hair. I'm not gonna worry about that. I just pull up on this. Snip, snip. Let me get right above this, actually. Let me see if I can. That's good. Okay, it trimmed down pretty good. Now, the uh, felt tip on the Dremel will do the rest. I think that's really it. There really wasn't that bad a theme on this. Uh, now, I'm just going to get some latex and a Q-tip and, you know, clean up the line a little bit. How many people do you know who can honestly say that they picked the nose of the Frankenstein monster? Don't move. So I'm going to latex, Q-tip, Stipple sponge. I'm just going to do these seams. Okay, so I trimmed the edges, I mean the seams, I trimmed the seams. There are a few spots, like there's latexes put on with Q-tip and stipple sponge to blend in the seam. There were a couple of, I pointed out this morning, small air holes in the upper lip. So I have some wet latex. 
drying here, here, there, 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 and the seam. Okay, we're gonna start painting now. This mask is gonna be the black and white version of Carla Fest the Monster. So our base coat is gonna be a very light gray. And the paint is mixed up. I always use nightshades paint from Motion Picture Effects. That is not a paid plug. I buy all my materials, but I just like it. So that's all I use. The two colors I will be using, since it's a black and white mask, I'm using black and white. Fright White and Black Sabbath are the names of the black and white paint. They have a sense of humor over there in Motion Picture Effects, don't they? All right. I keep, whenever I make a mask, I write my notes down in my book of like a recipe for every time I paint. Like for this mask, I already have the first three steps written down what I'm going to do. So I'm going to follow those three steps. After I do these three, I'll figure out what's happening after that. But one thing, one thing at a time. This could be 100% pressure on the airbrush and this color. And now we're going to go to time lapse mode. Okay, so the next, I've done two different um, shades of gray. One is the base coat, one is a slightly darker gray that I did some shadows, sunken eyes, nasolobial folds, cheekbones, lips, inner ears, did some shadowing, paint a little bit of darker gray on the top of the head where the this meets, but there's gonna be hair over there. I just wanna do a little bit of a, a blend, a, of a fade. Now this is just solid black and I have 0% pressure on the air, on the compressor because I'm just going to do the sunken eyes, cheekbones, the lips very subtly. Let's test it on the back here. 0% pressure. Great. Okay, look, I shaved. Um, here's where we are right now. Um, so far, we have the base coat down. We have some very subtle shadows. The base coat is a very pale gray. The shadows are a little bit darker gray that I put in, and then a little bit of black on 0% pressure, just in the eye bag area, the cheekbones, the lips, nasolobial folds in the inner ears, you know, very subtle. Um, and I painted some black here, as I explained before, just so when I put the hair on eventually, it just gives it um, a little bit of help if there's some spots where the hair is thin and you see, you don't see this color through, you see black. I also put a little bit of black, I sprayed where the bolts are gonna go just to give that little edge a little bit of darkness. But the next step is um, 
I have this, I mixed up some black acrylic paint. It's very watery. And what I'm gonna do, this is something I like to do on a lot of masks, not all, but some. This one is definitely getting it. I'm gonna take this chip brush, I'm gonna paint the entire mask with black paint. I like to do this with acrylics. So I'm just gonna paint. And I have a piece of cardboard under the, uh, under the mask here, just so it, my table doesn't get soaked with water. So I'm just gonna paint. Doesn't need to go in neatly because it's all gonna come off. I do this because I paint a lot of, I paint, I put a lot of texture in my sculpts and I want to catch that texture. I want to get some black into that texture, but then I want to use my water bottle and spray most of it off and just leave a trace of it. That's another reason why I paint this mask very pale because this is gonna give a little bit of a tint, a gray tint. So if I start lighter on my airbrush painting, that means that this, if I started with a medium gray and then I did this, the, the mask would be too dark. It would be a darker gray and I didn't want that. I still wanna keep it very pale. I was also thinking before, when, that, when this video starts, as you remember, how I had the cardboard cutout of the silhouette of Karloff and how big it looked. But as you can see, see the mask is a lot smaller because of the shrinkage of the latex. So by starting out with that silhouette in foam core, the profile being 10% larger than the, the size I wanted it, approximately 10% larger. That way, my mask that I'm looking at here is the size ultimately that I wanted the mask to be because latex shrinks. All right, we're almost done painting the acrylic. Another reason why I use nightshades paint is because I've tried other paints in the past and when you paint watery acrylic paint on it, on that, those paints would break down and start to literally break off from the, the latex mask. Nightshades paint, it just, it does not come off. So that's, you know, when I do my watery washes of acrylic paint, the nightshades doesn't affect the nightshades at all. So I love that. Once I, once I discovered that, I realized nightshades was the paint for me. All right, so now this is covered in in black. Now I'm just gonna heavily spray water on the mask, starting at the top. Spray the hell out of it. Walk around to the other side and do it over there too. Spray, spray, spray. Dripping down onto turn this. Looks like he's crying. Okay, now you get some paper towels. I'm gonna take some little bits. And I'm gonna look at the areas that it's pooling up. I'm just gonna gently blot, just with the paper towel. You just need a little bit of it, a little piece of paper towel. And I'm gonna, whoop, and I drop it. Especially around the eyes. Just not pressing hard, I'm just kind of dabbing. I don't wanna rub it. Once it gets too waterlogged, just throw it down and get another piece. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna leave little traces of black 
inside all those little texture grooves that I sculpted in. And the stuff that's on the surface of the skin, I, it's gonna, you know, the water, spraying the water on it makes that just go away. But that little remnant that's gonna stick, stay in the, in all the sculpted texture is what I want. So it's a, just a little bit, but it's just enough to give it that little extra lived in organic look to the skin. Also, also always gotta make sure that it, it, it will pull up inside the ear, so. That'll take hours to dry, so just dab in there. Got inside there where the bolts are going to go. That one's dried out. And always get under the chin. It always pulls under the chin. This is a cool effect because it, it makes... Doesn't really make it look dirty, but it just looks like I, I just don't want to have a mask that is just perfectly clean looking and and just glassy. Just gives it a more lived in look. But it's subtle. But your your eye your eye picks it. You know, your brain picks it up and it sees it, but it's not like I'm slapping black paint over it and just leaving it on there and big streaks and stuff. It's subtle. When it dries, it'll look really cool. Right now it's, you know, still wet. Just want to make sure I don't want to have little, like here in the nostrils. And tomorrow, because I'm going to go, it's 10.30 at night. I mean, I pulled this mask out of the mold this morning, so I'm already painting it. But, you know, I came, to, I, this morning I took it out, and then later this evening, earlier this evening, I, the edges were, um, the seams were not that difficult to fix, and all that. And painting, I'm starting, got the, you know, tomorrow will be all the small details and dry brushing and hair and all that. I'm not even gonna think about hair at this point. That's, plus I gotta finish the paint job. All right, and I'm almost done with this wash. See, I had this mask covered in black watery acrylic paint and there's very little of it left because it was never gonna really just be covered and left on. I just wanted it for these subtle things. All right, good, I think, um, Let's check under the chin again. Yeah, see this still, there's still some, it always pulls under the chin because it just rolls down and catches there. So that's good. I think that's enough. Let me just dab at this. Sometimes it leaves some really interesting patterns on the skin. That's actually pretty cool. It looks like, you know, a little bit like dirty, like he was running away from villagers and went through a bunch of trees. All right, I think that's it. So let's move this over here. So now let's move this light. He's still wet. From that wash. But he looks pretty good. So far, so good. I mean, there's still a lot to do on him. I mean, not even not counting the hair. His eyes haven't been painted. His lips haven't been painted. Inside his nostrils haven't been painted. Lots of little things to do. But so far, so good. I think, I think he looks... Awesome. I'm very happy with how this is coming out. Good morning. It is uh, Saturday morning and it's a little after five o'clock in the morning. And you know, 
If it's five o'clock in the morning and I'm up, you know it's time for coffee. So what I did here now, I took some of that watery black acrylic paint and I just painted under the eye, a little bit under the brow here, that line, in the nostrils, and I put a little bit on the, on the lips. Just painted the eyes white. I'm gonna do another coat when this dries. Put some of that watery black in this scar. Also on the neck scar. So I uh, turned the mask upside down so I could paint black on the uh, upper eyelid here. You probably wouldn't see this when you're looking at the mask dead on, but and it's also a little bit of black inside the nostrils. So little things. Okay, so here's where we are now. Um, I painted that clamp silver. I put some more black on the head where the hair is going to go just to make it a little darker. Um, face is pretty much done. And what I'm going to do now is, actually I painted the, the bolt silver. I'm going to actually apply the bolts. I'm going to mix up some Gorilla Glue and I'm going to insert the bolt into the holes here where they, where they fit in on both sides. And uh, because I do want to do a little more paint on these, but I want to put, uh, glue them in first, let that set, and then paint a little more silver. And then I'm going to put um, a little bit of that black acrylic paint. I'm just going to do a stain over these to make them a little, a little more uh, world-weary and aged looking. Um, and uh, the next thing I'm going to do, though, before I glue those in, I'm going to take, because I want to have, I think I'm going to do the eyes looking up like he has here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, with the pencil, kind of lightly mark where the iris is going to, the eye is going to go. Because I don't want to just wing it with a paintbrush with paint and, and screw it up. So I'm just going to take a pencil. You can, you can faintly put a little line on white uh, paint here. So I'm going to just draw that to give myself a little guide so I can paint the eyes correctly. Because I don't like painting eyes. Usually I like to insert plastic eyes I buy, but because they don't make eyes in you know, black and white, as far as I know, I have to paint these, which I'm not too thrilled with. Anyway, I'm gonna do that now. All right, let's take a look. So I just painted the eyes. Oh, you can't see anything. Let me turn this. All right, I just painted the eyes. Why are you looking at me like that? I gave you life. Um, all right. Let me just put this like this. Okay, cool. So, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna um, mix up some Gorilla Glue and put the bolts in. So, let me make some room. This is paint that's dry. Is it clean? Yes. Old Chinese food soup containers are the best for your paintbrush. All right, Gorilla Glue, plastic cup. Where's my, where's my mixing stick? I didn't bring one. Let me go get one. Popsicle sticks. A friend of every mask maker or person who mixes things. All right, these are the bolts. They're silver. Um, like I said, I'm gonna put another layer of silver on them once I put them in. I'm gonna put these on, I have to run out and actually do some errands, so I'm gonna glue these in, and then they need to dry anyway, so I'm gonna take an hour off from paint. So, I'm gonna, I just need a little bit of this. These are so messy when you open these because this stuff just comes out. I don't need that much. Get out of there, you. That's plenty. 
it's messy because it just dribbles out. Ugh. And you don't want to get it on your fingers. Did I put this? All right, that went on pretty good. See, it's still dribbling. Gross. All right. I notice when you make masks, you do a lot of mixing. I mix a lot of things. We're constantly mixing. Um, since this is usually, and I use this stuff for the, um, to coat the eyes, to give it that wet look, but I'm not doing that now. And this stuff dries hard, so it ruins brushes. That's why I always buy cheap brushes at Michael's. This stuff's gotta be mixed good. But this takes like 40 minutes to set, so I don't need to like work quickly with this. But all I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take a Q-tip, and I'm gonna just put, mix this up first, then I'll talk. All right, Q-tip. I'm gonna just take some and on the Q-tip and stick it inside here. Line the in, inner area with this stuff. Nice and wet, both of them. Make sure to get it inside, not running down the your mask. You don't want to, you know, too much in there so it's all you know pouring out just enough just coat it with a q-tip and then I will repeat that but I'll coat the end of the remember I made these specifically about a little bit longer than they needed to be because I knew they were going to be going into the mask into that like quarter inch cavity in the mask and I made them hollow because these are not very big, but I don't want them, you know, every, if you can save a little bit of weight on the mask, I mean, you don't want a big heavy piece. That, not that these would be that heavy, but you know what I mean. All right, and now I will just, let me bring this in closer. Okay. I'll just, and it fits right in. this one because so I will paint a little bit acrylic glue epoxy on the edge of the bolt I don't need to put too much because remember it's already wet inside there this is gonna bond with that and put it in there now I just want to look at them now you can't see this, but I'm looking at the mask from the back and I'm making sure that those little, those little knobby, nubby things are, I'm gonna turn this one a little bit because this one could be turned slightly clockwise. Okay, good. All right, so they're in, they're in those little areas. And uh, let me throw this out and I'll show you what I've done. Okay. These paper towels. Friend, good. Um, obviously the hair has to be done. But before that, um, I am going to airbrush a little bit of uh, Liquitex acrylic gloss to coat the mask. And um, then I'm going to mix up some more epoxy and put a little bit of it on his eyeballs to give him that wet look. And then I'm going to let all that set. And then later on, when all that is set in an hour or so, I will come down and hair the mask. 
and then we will be done. Yay! All right, we are uh, at the point where the mask is painted and I'm just gonna put some gloss. So I mixed up um, Liquitex gloss medium. I always keep it in a little container here with a lid. I w add some water, I don't want it too thick. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna give a generous coating to the mask. Let me move this over here. Okay. Not worrying about the where the hair is gonna go because you're never gonna see that. More about the skin. Always have to get from this angle too. Right, that's pretty much it. Let me just do the back of the neck a little bit more. Whoa. Mirrors. Oh, all right, wait, I gotta put some more. I need a little bit more of this. A little bit. That's plenty. Do the back of that. Next. Back of the ears. Making sure I'm getting tops of the ears. All right. Well, next up is herring. This mask is completely painted and sealed. I just epoxied the eyes so they have that wet look to them. Put a little bit on the lower lip. And uh, so now, hair. So there's some hair. There's my brush. There's my Mod Podge. And the herring will take about an hour or so just to apply the hair and let it, you know, let, have to let the glue dry. So that's going to be time lapse coming up. Okay, it's time to start doing the hair. I have a bunch of hair already cut into a. Uh, about three to four inch length uh, groups. And uh, when you do hair, you start at the back of the head and you work your way forward. And so that's what we're gonna do. We got my Mod Podge, got my brush, got my hair. Now we're gonna go time lapse. All right, that was an enjoyable time-lapse video. Um, so, the mask is haired. Glue is wet, and it's gonna have to sit here for, you know, most of the day to dry, because this Mod, Mod Podge, Mod Podge, folks, it dries very slowly, but it dries clear and matte, so it doesn't have a shine and you'll never see it, um, but it dries slow, and that's fine. I'm not in a rush. now. You may be thinking to yourself, why does the Frankenstein monster have a beetle's haircut, beetle wig? That's because the way I hair masks, I put it on pretty thick um, and I let the glue dry. And then when the glue is dry, I go in, I style it. Some of the hair is gonna come out. It's gonna look right when it's done. It's gonna look like that when it's done. But for now, I gotta let the hair and the glue sit and I have to be patient. So I'm gonna end this video now. We're gonna come, and plus this light is not helping. This is blowing it out. It's, I, the lighting down here is terrible. But I'm gonna come down later on, early evening. You know, cause right now it's, what is it? It's like 
one o'clock in the afternoon. I'll probably have to wait till like, I'll probably have to give it six hours to, for this to dry. So tonight, I'll come down, style the hair, I'll do it all on the video, and then the mask will be done. And I have another little, little trick to show you how I get those little bangs of his. Uh, and that will be for later. I'm gonna take the mask off the stand. I'm just gonna shake it out. Let me take the bags out. Put those back in now, I don't need them in now. And I'm just gonna, you'll see there's gonna be lots of hair flying around. Yeah, there, now we got hair flying all over the place. Which is fine, because I'm gonna sweep up later. Little, little hairs, you probably can't see them in the video, but they're getting in my face. All right, that's good. That's fine. Okay, that's enough. Let me fix that in a second. I will be sweeping up later. All right. I have the camera over there, the phone over there, because I didn't want to get hair on it. Now I'll move this closer. Straighten them out. Okay. Now, I'm just gonna use my hand and I'm just gonna press the hair down in the correct direction it needs to go. All these bits in the front need to get combed forward and like this. And then at some point the hair can go back. So I'm just going to use my hand and I'm going to press down and more hair will come out. Wait, let me make sure this is sitting in, the, in here correctly. Okay, that's good. I think that's good. All right, so I'm just going to use my hand and I'm going to just go like this and style it. All right, now, toothbrush. I'm gonna basically comb his hair with a toothbrush. This is gonna remove more hair so I can start to get the volume that I want. I wouldn't use a regular brush. This is a toothbrush. It's just not gonna take a lot of hair out at a time. But it's gonna remove a little at a time, which is what I want so I can see I'm doing better. All right, that was the uh had to do some time lapse there because that would have been very boring if you saw me doing that for the last 10 minutes. So I'm just gonna gather some of this hair off the table. I cut some hair. Let me show you what I did so far. So I trimmed. See, he looks a lot different already. Let me move this. Let me move this closer here. Let's do this closer. And I'll move this back a little bit. That's good. Okay. Let me just straighten him up a bit. Down here. That's good. All right. So what I did is I, you know, reduced the volume of his hair so it's not so poofy. And I cut the back, you know, and now really all I need to do is now that the volume is down a lot and it's, it's shorter and it looks much closer to the volume and proportions I want and length. Now what I need to do is I need to, the side, the bangs are, you know, flat and they're those little, those little, um, I don't know what you call those, like little, uh, points. 
that are separate. They come down over as far. They're like almost like they're greasy or they're like they're wet or Vaseline or something. I'm not going to do that. And also on the sides of his head, they come down here too. Now, normally I would just take hairspray and go spray it and then move it. But hairspray is very sticky. And once you spray hairspray, the hair is going to clump together. So yesterday I was saying, I'm going to show you a trick I do when I do any kind of Frankenstein monster masks or any masks that have hair that comes to a very specific point on the forehead or anything. So what I'm going to do is I have hairspray, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray those areas with water. And what will happen is the water will cause the hair to be, you know, obviously wet. And I'll be able to style it if I work quickly because water is going to evaporate. What I'm going to do is I'm going to spray the hair. And then when it's wet, I'm going to use my fingers and move all those little hairs into the points I want and all that. Because it's not going to be sticky. It's just going to be wet. Once I have the hair styled the way I want it and it's wet, then, then I will spray it with hairspray. Because what's going to happen is the water will evaporate, but the hairspray won't. But by styling it when the hair is only wet with water, I'll be able to work with it without it being sticky hair. Aha, that's the trick. So, and wa spraying water on this will not affect the paint because it's been sealed and it's nightshade's paint, which water doesn't affect. So I'm gonna do the front, I'm gonna do the back first, actually. And what I'll do is I'll do the back, flatten it out and just spray it with hairspray just to get the back going. So I'm just gonna spray it with water and I will be using my hand to flatten it down. I mean, it's already kind of flat already, but I just want it flatter. I mean, some hair will get on my hand, but that's just because it's wet. If it's not sticking, I can just go like that. It comes right off. All right, so that's the back of the head. I'll just do this, because this is just flat against his head. This is not like any spe specific type of a style. It's just flat and easy. All right, that's all I had to do. You got the hair off my hand, and I want to spray it. Heavily. And I could spray it later when this, when this is dry, I might have to spray it again. The, this whole, what I'm doing now is just to get the hair styled correctly, just to have it that way. All right, let me move this forward. The back is done. I will do the sides actually next. Let me turn this. So I'll do this. Actually, I need to put the camera back here so I can do it without. I can show you what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Water, water, water. So I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna do this. This is for the front. And I can use your, see, it's not sticking to my hand or anything. It's just wet. So I can just do, let me look at that picture again. Yeah, it's just kind of plastered down to the side. It's not covering his ear. It's not on his ear, it doesn't go there. So I'm just gonna do, and I can use that toothbrush to move those hairs around a little bit. And plus, when this is dry later, I can, if this is too long, I can just cut, you know, cut it. I don't want it going too much into the face. That's good. Whoop, whoop, don't get things over, don't break things. All right, that's good. I'll do this side. Oh, I got hair in my mouth even. Jeez. All right, we wet it. We use our finger. We press it down against. And use a toothbrush again. Actually, I like that. That looks good. All right, spray. All right, now we'll do the front. This is the most iconic part of his hair. Oh, look at that. I missed that. Let me move that. I want. It, I don't want it on his ear. I want it. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Okay. Now I got to make all those little, those little pointy things. All right. I mean, it doesn't be perfect. Just gotta make a bunch of them. Actually, I'm gonna spray the top of the head. I'm gonna spray a lot of water on this. my hand because I want that flat 
Frankenstein monster look. This is fun. This is when it really comes to life. Okay, now let's see now. I gotta use my, I'm gonna separate these. Uh, let me see, what can I use for that? Uh, I'm just gonna pick them up individually and make, yeah, I'll have to do it like this. I'm just gonna make little, little points with wet hair. To stand up and do this. In fact, if I pull all the hair up like this, I can probably do it easier. Yeah, like that. Okay. Again, I'm getting hair all over my hands, but that's okay. See, and it's because it's only water. It's not sticky. It's just wet. Look at this paintbrush. I might be able to get in there and move. Yeah, look at that. That's good. I can just, yeah, look at that. I can just move everything around. This works. Oh, yay. See, like, how I have this negative space in between these clumps? See, I want to do that over here a bit more. That, yeah, look at that, that works good. Um, oh, I sprayed this with hairspray, so I really can't do much, but that's fine, this is, that looks fine like it is. It's, this is the area I wanted to focus on. We are about a minute away. You scum with some of these pieces over here. That's good. The clamp is completely exposed. It's not covered in hair. That's a good thing. Now I'm just going to take a piece of paper towel. And just make sure I just press them down, making sure they're flat against, they're pressed up against the forehead. Okay. I have a lot of hair in my mouth. I am now going to hairspray this. Do the back again. See, there's still water dripping off this thing, and that's fine, because, uh, Water is going to evaporate. All right, let me pick this thing up so you can see. Let me turn this annoying light off. All right. Now that has to dry, then I can make it a little prettier. Right now it has to be wet looking like that. But I'll style it later. So we're not done yet. And there he is. I finished the tips of his hair. I hairsprayed them again. They're still a little wet, but they're drying, but he's done. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. We, you saw me create him literally from nothing to a finished painted and haired mask. And there he is.